Hey guys, welcome back. So today I've got something kind of interesting for you. It was actually a pretty big project. Um, so big that I have to split it into two parts actually, but I'll explain that more in a little bit. So what we will be trying to create today is actually the Master Sword um, from The Legend of Zelda, Link's Sword. I'll put a little picture right over here for those of you who don't know what that is, but I think it's safe to say that most people are familiar with what this is um, considering Legend of Zelda's popularity. So let's get modeling. Okay, so here we have the files in Fusion 360, um, and as you can see, this right here is the full sword. I created this all in one piece, and then I split it up over here, and then I just created little holes to use as a key register. Something to keep in mind is that these little registers are not meant to keep the um, final print together so you will need some sort of glue or adhesive to attach this thing those are more just to um, hold it together until you can get to that point and hold it in the right place overall these aren't really that hard of prints and surprisingly i was a little iffy about these overhangs like on this um the the two parts of the handle here you know i, I didn't have much faith that they'd be able to accomplish that but it did it no problem for me but if you are having issues with any of these um support should be simple to add and then here we are in matter control getting ready to send the files over to the printer and yes we are back in matter control um i tried out kira and call me crazy but i actually prefer matter control not, not that there's anything wrong with kira it was a great program i just i like how this one works a little bit better and you've got um you know you can have your quality settings and your profile settings i just i, I like it um, and actually they just released an update to um, fix their support issue because that was one of the biggest reasons I heard people complain about this was the supports were just awful and I can attest to that. I mean, it, it would print fine with supports but you could not get them off. But they have fixed that and I have printed with supports since then and they pop off just as easy as the ones from Kira. So I am back and until I can afford Simplify 3D, I think this is where I'm gonna stay but luckily most of the settings will translate to Cura really really easily. So let's talk about the settings real quick. Um, I went at 0.3 millimeter layer height and obviously you can go higher than that it'll just improve the quality I just wanted to save some filament. And Then I went with 20% infill I would not go any lower than that. And then as I stated before I did not print this with any supports or a raft or anything um, and it printed really well. I just had to angle it on my bed because it actually did not fit going straight across. So as we step through, um, looks pretty good. Like I said, I was worried about that overhang, but it did great. Like there wasn't even any like deterioration of the quality underneath there. I was incredibly surprised and there was no issues with any of this over here either. So worked really really good also guys if you'd like to know more about how i created this in fusion 360 um check the little eye up in the corner or down in the description and you'll find a link to the video showing how i created it okay so let's send this to the printer and get it printing Alright guys, while well, I goofed up when I recorded this, um, I usually record a little thing right after the printer's done showing the printed parts um, before they get painted and talking a little bit how, about how to assemble them, but um, I accidentally left my phone on time-lapse mode and so uh, you can't hear any audio and it's sped up really fast, so I uh, screwed up on that one. So I'll just show you the footage real quick and we will just briefly talk about it. Um, so yeah, it's shaking all over the place, so I, I really apologize about this. But you can see the little pins I've created there, and you just basically slide them in, and then you can slide the pieces together. And as I said before, they are not meant to hold the entire thing together for your final use of it. They are just meant to hold it in place until you can super glue it. Okay guys, well once again, I apologize about that. But from this point, I passed it on to my wife for painting. So we'll check back in a second when she's done with that. All right, guys, well, here's your first look. Um, and it is pretty big, so 
I'm gonna have to like kind of scroll it through. Here's the blade. And here is the handle. Try to get that all in there. Let's take a second to appreciate how good of a job my wife did filling in those seams and painting this. That is near perfect. And the handle looks a little blue in the video, but it's uh, purple in real life, so probably some weird settings that I have or my lighting that's causing that. Now let's talk about the post-processing. This was by far the most difficult one I've thrown at my wife yet, so I've thanked her many times for putting as much work into this as she did, because she spent a long time on it, and I am very appreciative. And we actually spent a long time just trying to figure out how to fill the seams in, because that is not as easy as it first looks if um, you're not very familiar with that type of work. So let's get into the details of how she did that. So first of all, after I got it printed and all snapped together, we needed to glue it because it did not hold very well, so we used this um, Gorilla Super Glue. And this actually worked amazingly well, but the catch is that you have to let it sit for a very long time. I think we let it sit for two or three days, um, but after that, it was completely um, rigid and then we don't have to worry too much about it breaking um, while we're moving it around. So you can actually hold it by the handle and you don't have to worry about any of that. And then the next thing she had to tackle was connecting the seams because like there's actually a seam right there but I'm betting you can't even see it. And how she did that was actually this right here. Loctite repair putty. And it's basically just putty that you um, take out and spread over the seam and let dry. And she said that it dried extremely fast, so you have to work quickly when you're using this stuff. But she just spread it on there and then um, sanded the whole thing after that. And then after that, she actually took a hand sander to it to sand down both the print and the putty. I'll put a little video up here. And she also used um, just some normal sandpaper with her hand to get some of the, the finer finishes on it. I think she started out somewhere around 100 grit and then moved up until she hit 400 to get this sort of finish. And then she said she actually used a Dremel tool to clean up some of these um, areas in here where there was lots of stringing and some sort of artifacts from the print that you can't really get sandpaper. So she used a Dremel with, I think, a cone-shaped head to get in there. So after all that is done and your seams look good, then we can go about our business as usual with painting these. So what we'll need to do there first is prime it. Just use some spray plastic primer. Give it as many coats as you think you need. And then after your primer has completely dried, move to painting the blade. And for this, we actually used um, Krylon Hammered Metal. I'll try to get it in the picture there. So right there you can see Krylon Hammered Metal. Um, and this actually works really good. By the way, I'm not sponsored by Krylon. Um, it'd be awesome if I was, but they're just great products, so we use them, and I'm telling you what we use. So after you've got the hammered metal on there, it's time to move to the handle and the guard section. Now what she did is she actually taped off the entire blade, and then um, you know tape in these sections here to cover all of the hammered metal. And then she took an airbrush to color in the um, purple that you see here. But if you don't have access to an airbrush, um, you can use spray paint or even paint it with paint brushes and acrylic paint. Just whatever you want to do there. And then after you've let that completely dry are the extra colored details here like the gold and the green. I think she did the green with normal acrylic paints and paint brushes. And then for this gold she actually used this paint pen. Now these things are awesome because they're just pens. I mean they're, they're kind of like markers. Um, but they actually go on it looking like spray paint or an airbrush and so that's where you see this really really nice color and finish here but she can basically just draw on it with a pen and we also have silver and she actually used this to touch up a little bit that bled through from the tape so these are awesome and we highly recommend them well guys there you have it this is freaking awesome and look how big it is I mean I can't even get it all in the picture Alright guys, well I hope you enjoyed this, and this is by far the biggest print I've done so far. Um, I don't know that I'm going to continue this trend um, a lot, just because uh, it does take a lot of time to model print and do all the post-processing work. Uh, my wife spent a long time doing this, she did a great job. So I, w I wouldn't say get used to this type of thing, I will do a couple of these here and there, but 
for the most part, I'll be doing some smaller things like the Babom or the uh, Thor's hammer back there. And as always, links for this are down in the description, including the Fusion 360 file. So if you want to modify it, you can. And now, as I mentioned earlier, this is actually going to be a two part thing. So part one, obviously, is the sword. Part two is the sheath. I originally modeled the sheath up with this um, and printed it out, but all of the printing and post-processing work was just taking too long with these. So um, we decided to focus on this one, get it done so I could present this video. And then um, part two next week will be the sheath that this actually fits into. So this will be a completely functional cosplay item if anyone wants to do that with it. So expect to see this next week. Also in the speed modeling video that I usually put up every Wednesday, you can actually check it out now in the description. I unlist it for a few days. Um, so if anyone's interested, they can check it out down there. But you'll actually see the sheath in there as well. So that means next week I won't have one, but I do have a special video going up for you guys next week. So look forward to that. All right, guys, if you're wondering what to watch next, check the little eye up in the corner, or if you're on mobile down in the description, I'll put a couple videos there. And then if you thought this was cool, make sure you like and subscribe, and then leave me a comment down below. Also, any shares of this video are greatly appreciated as well. All right, guys, thanks for joining me. See you next time.